So today to change things up, we are back in the kitchen at Hickory Croft Farm today and we're going to be making squash fries with our Canada Crook Neck squash. So just in case you're new to following our channel, uh, Canada Crook Neck is one of the new squash that we uh, decided to grow this year. And we're going to link the video above here where you can see our harvest because we did amazing. Uh, we ended up with, what was it, 260 pounds? Don't quote me on that because I didn't watch the video before I did this video, but I think it was around 260 pounds of squash. So needless to say, we have been getting creative with how to use this squash. And uh, one thing I will say, this, this one that I've got here is kind of what you would need for this recipe. Uh, I'm kind of terrible. I basically am cutting off the neck only and I just chop that up into the fries because it's really simple to slice and make into matchsticks. Uh, then I take the ball later on and use that for stir fry or roasting or something like that. So it does store well in the fridge if uh, you decide to do that. So through the miracle of YouTube of course, there we are. It's already uh, cut up into matchsticks. One day I'd love to do that thing that I see people do on their videos where they take like the big squash and they just go bam and it's fries. <laughs> but I'm not that talented yet when it comes to uh, editing. Uh, but anyway, so we've got our fries cut up here. Now it's just Chris and I eating tonight. So we didn't go too overboard. Um, basically, uh, you'd probably do a little bit more than this if you were using the whole squash. We ended up using about three quarters of the neck. I will take you through the recipe now. One thing I find is I prefer not to actually wash my squash beforehand. I know where it comes from. I've peeled it. Uh, that was one thing I didn't actually mention, but most people know you should peel your squash. Um, Canada Crook Neck is really nice for that because it just use a regular peeler. It works fantastic, very similar to butternut. Uh, but anyways, I digress. When you leave it dry, it works better for putting the cornstarch on and all the uh, seasoning. I find as soon as it gets wet, it all gets bunged up. It doesn't work so well. So if you have to wash it, I would suggest drying it on a paper towel or leave it sit somewhere for a little bit. Once you got your fries ready, it's three tablespoons of cornstarch scattered on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not uh, anything too wild and crazy. Three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now again, this is all to taste, so if you want to have it more garlicky or whatever, that's fine. Now, I love this recipe with smoked paprika. Chris and I are very excited this year to be growing some paprika peppers and hopefully make our own, but you want a half a teaspoon. If you don't have smoked paprika, regular paprika does work just fine as well. A little bit different flavor, that's all. And uh, half a teaspoon of thyme. Now, I probably should have crushed that up a little bit, but that's okay. And that's basically it. Then I just kind of take it and I just sort of make a mess, basically. Mix it all around. Mostly that's just to kind of get the seasonings all kind of mixed in there. Once you have that done, you're going to drizzle it with three tablespoons of olive oil. Now one thing I will say as I do this is we have used our goose oil, goose fat, to do this recipe and it tasted amazing. So unfortunately I'm down to only a little tiny bit left until we do another butcher. So we're using store-bought. But that's it. Again, just going to toss it around and then you're going to lay it onto a cookie sheet. So we've got it all shook up. One thing uh, I would recommend is putting parchment paper down on your cookie sheet first. They do cook way better. I have tried. They get stuck to the pan. It's not super fun. Uh, I've now recently discovered my little silicone cookie sheets work great for this. And then we're basically just going to put them out. I'll spread them around. And then we're going to use our handy dandy air fry button on the uh, uh, stove here. If you have an air fryer, you would have to follow your own directions on that. But for me, I just push the button and it's 425 and I cook them for uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I turn the light on and watch just to make sure they're not getting too burnt or anything. And then just turn it off and let them sit for another 10 minutes in there and it should be perfect. So we'll bring you back when we take them out. So here we are out of the oven and onto our plate. 
We're having partridge Chanticleer chicken burgers with Canada Crookneck squash fries. Very tasty. Now, one thing I will say is these don't go super crispy. At least we haven't found it. I mean, you get some around the edges. It could be the fact that I'm using little rubber things. I did get better results with using actual parchment paper, but I also like these because they're reusable. So they still work great and we love them. So I hope you give them a try.